you always want a little reassurance that things are going all right. I don't need updates every single day on Deshaun Watson. I don't need them every single day on Nick Chubb. I believe that they're doing what they need to do. They're in the hands of good doctors, but a couple of check-ins here and there is something that puts our mind at ease. And I think we got that yesterday. I wasn't expecting Kevin Stefanski or even Deshaun Watson who spoke to the media to come out and be like, oh yeah, we're good. Rubber stamp it, we're good to go. Back for training camp, back for the regular season. It's an ebb and flow process. But there's still a little bit. I, I just need a little something. A little something for me to grab onto to feel good about the injury updates with the Cleveland Browns, which are a plenty. We'll hear from Kevin Stefanski. who's asked about the offensive line as well. But yesterday, I got what I needed. I got what I needed yesterday from Deshaun Watson, from Kevin Stefanski. Everything is good. Ryan, have you seen Animal House? No. Oh, my God. There's a scene at the end with a young Kevin Bacon. And he's standing during a, basically, a, a, I don't want to say a riot, but a flood of people are running. And he's standing there, all is well. All is well. Kind of how I feel with the Browns for right now. Go watch Animal House. That's a requirement, I think, here on this show. It's a damn good movie. But watch that. All is well when it comes to the Cleveland Browns. All is well. With the Cleveland Guardians, yeah! How about them guards? Boy, did they try to choke that away. Boy, did they try. But nonetheless, a win for the Guardians yesterday. I love it. Gearing up for the Cavs. We have our start time a little earlier than I thought it was going to be on Saturday. But that's all right. Start time for them. Ryan, I've got a savory seven-round mock draft wow. from the one, the only, Dane Brugler. The beast is out. Wow. Dane Brugler put a seven-round mock out. It is fresh. It I, is hot off of Twitter right now. Man, I don't he even know if I should be spoiling this, Matt. What? He'll be on Big Play Cleveland show Monday. What? Let's yeah. go. Dane Brug Dane is the best, man. Yeah. He's so good. I've talked to Dane a lot over my time here. He is so good. Big Play Cleveland show on Monday. We got his mock this morning. Hopefully we I was allowed to spoil that. That's all right. Hey, promotion is never a bad thing. That's what buddy. I'm saying. Promotion is never a bad thing. We got that. We got our bracket with, I just got a text about milkshakes and McDonald's saying they're underrated. The votes are in for your favorite McDonald's item. We got a fresh batch to go tonight. We'll get to time up. We'll get to the grid. Damn grid. And we'll get to the morning update. And we're hitting our guards boost tonight. I'm just feeling it. We got it all for you right here on Big Play. Welcome to the show, everybody. I am Matt Fontana. He is Ryan Tyler. Good morning. Happy to have you alongside with us as always. Streaming Twitter, YouTube, and we're up on Instagram as well. At Matt Fontana Show Twitch. You can also check us out there. At Matt Fontana Show. We got to get Ryan one follower. Ryan is one follow away from a thousand. I just want to see the K. At the K. Ryan Tyler 30. Three. Make a young man's dream come true this morning. My thousandth follower. Thousandth. We have maybe nothing to give you because I don't know how we'd figure out who it is. We'll give you a shout out. When you get the thousandth, go to your followers. And Ryan see Tyler who it was. 33. Follow him. Get him a thousand. We'll give you a shout out. I might even have some swag for you. Maybe. <laughs> I can't promise it. I just put the request in for a few, you know, some more swag. This is a Cleveland baseball shirt here. For big play. So we got some swag coming in as well. So gets all that coming up as well. So get Ryan his thousandth follow. Do that. Then you always can say you're the thousandth follow. True. Then wait. Then you have a clean out tonight and you'll be down four guys and back yeah. up and all that. Twitter's, Twitter's a finicky thing. Well, injuries can certainly be a finicky thing. And yesterday, Browns were their first media availability of their offseason program. I will start by saying I'm a little shocked that Sean Watson spoke. It would have been easy to be like, ah, you know, he's injured, but... They understand where he's at, so he got up to the podium yesterday and he spoke. And, you know, I started by saying, I don't need daily updates because it's not something that is going to change by the day. This is going to change by the week, by the month, and I've heard nothing which is good. And I think, you know, the pressure on the Browns, which we know is going to be immense and we're going to hear from Deshaun Watson about the pressure on this season – but right now, it's like that level of concern, right? And there are people that just assume it's going to be fine. This, the injuries happen. The only thing that 
kind of gets me is that this is an injury that a quarterback has never really had. Like, I would actually feel better if this was just like an ACL injury. Those happen a dime and doesn't, right? This is something that even Watson spoke about. They went to doctors for baseball players, for tennis players while they're serving, right? It sounds like this is an injury that is is not something that football players normally deal with. So it's different maybe on how they're going to approach it because he's going to get hit in that shoulder, the throwing motion, all that. But in essence, you're dealing with the bone break, which they had to set with the surgery. Bone breaks can be a little bit better. It's either when it heals, it heals. This isn't a stretched out ligament. This isn't a tendon thing. But then we forget he had the other injury. And I do want to start with this because Tom Withers sent a tweet out yesterday. And I don't think Tom is wrong for what he's getting to. It's the fact that there's so much mystery surrounding this. Watson couldn't say he doesn't really remember when the hit happened that broke his shoulder. And then he said he went back to the Titans game and then he heard some clicking and then it got hurt in the ring. Like, and, and, you know, people, I wanted to tweet this at Tom. You got to understand on Twitter that people get angry because they don't even know how they feel. They just get angry because Twitter is a venting place for a lot of people. So he riled up some people trying to be like, oh, what is this, a conspiracy theory? Or, Tom brings up great points. This wasn't on the hit of Nick Chubb. You knew when this happened. It's just the, it's not clean and cut. This isn't just, this is exactly what happened. And it can be a little confused. Now, if the doctors are on top of this, great. If they know exactly what's going on, okay. But it's just, Ryan, that this there was a little bit of unknown and like mystery to this whole thing. And sometimes you don't like that. You don't want well, to hear that kind of stuff. How much does it truthfully matter when the hit happened? Because whether it happened week three, the Titans, whether it was he missed the next game, obviously that's when DTR played the Ravens. He went into the Colts game, clearly not 100%, got hurt again, had to come out of that basically that whole entire game. And then, you know, plays the Cardinals, kind of, and then gets hurt again. Like, what was it, week, whatever it was against the Ravens away? You know, that's when the final kind of straw that broke the camel's back for Deshaun yeah. Watson's shoulder there. But I think he said, yeah, it was the clicking that he heard in Baltimore, which you never want to hear a shoulder click. So that's my thing is I look at it again. I, I appreciate it, Tom, bringing up and he wasn't trying to rile people up, but it was just like it, it's a reminder of just kind of how weird this was and kind of how weird all of it played out. All right. Surgery's done. We're good to go. Can we hear from Deshaun Watson first this morning, Ryan? So let's do that. Let's go to Watson here. So one of the first questions asked to him was, how is your shoulder responding to this point, and how are you feeling right now with everything? I feel uh, really good. i um, very confident in myself in the process that's going. Shoulder's been really well. Um, so just making sure that I don't do anything extra that's going to harm it or, or, or anything like that. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing. That's exactly what – you know, Dr. Elitrash and the guys told me is don't try to do anything extra and rush back. So um, just follow this the script and the and the plan, and you'll be exactly where you want to want to be, even even better than before. That sound video, courtesy of the Cleveland Browns, we thank them for that. The thing that I caught there was not to do anything extra. Don't do anything more than you should. We're on this plan, but eventually it's going to have to get ramped up, and it will for training camp. But I thought that was the interesting part of right now. Because I wondered the question if he was going to throw during this period. There are reports that he is throwing, maybe a little bit here, a little bit there. But the thing about pulling the reins back. And when I think about injuries, you hear about players. And you want to believe in players like Deshaun Watson and Nick Chubb. When you hear coaches say they're attacking their rehab. There's important levels to that. When you think about guys that are showing up every day, putting in the work, I mean, listen, it's not an easy thing. Coming off of an injury, and none of us have been in a professional sense of injuries, but like you know what physical therapy is if you've ever gone through it. Like it's a really hard thing to do. So you would rather have guys that you say, you know what, we're going to pull the reins back on you here. We're going to pull you on back because we're going to know the plan. You don't want guys you got to get motivated. You don't want guys you say, well, you're not showing up for your rehab here. You're not doing the things you're supposed to be doing. It can really be the make or break part. It's a bad pun, and I apologize. But it can be the make or break thing on the injury if the guy is putting in the work. So I liked hearing that from Watson to say, I'm following this plan. We're not going to overdo it here. We're going to just go along with it. 
And then eventually with everything else that's going to play out. So another question asked to Watson, when are you planning? Great question from Jake Trotter. When are you planning or hoping to be 100% again? Again, video sound courtesy of the Cleveland Browns. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, the plan is to, you know, come back whenever they, they feel like, and I feel like we're on the same page that we're ready. So there's not a timeline or a date that we have that, you know, this is when I'm going to be a hundred percent, you know, it's just kind of, you know, how the process, it can be sooner than later. It can be later than soon, you know? So, um, I think it's just really depending on how each landmark we hit and how fast we can get it and how my shoulder is reacting. That's the opposite of what he said when he opened his restaurant, right? When he opened his restaurant, he said, I'm going to be good to go for week one. I'll be ready to go. Yeah, you walk it back a little bit, and Watson's right. You could have a setback. You could have something that impacts where you're at or what's going on, and you change it. That's why I think going in slow like they are is probably the right idea. The thing is, again, I'm not involved in this. Ryan, would you not believe that week one is your deadline? It, week yeah. one's got to be it. And I'm not saying that they wouldn't put him out there if he's not 100%. Maybe he never gets back to 100%. I don't know. Those are all hypotheticals. I'd have to believe that week one against the whoever you're facing, I almost said the Eagles, but we're not going to Brazil. Whoever you're facing in week one, that's your goal. That's your deadline. I don't expect him to play at all in preseason, right? I don't. I, I, I really think that's probably the smart thing to do is to keep him out. Now we'll have conversations then about him not getting hit, right, and getting into football shape. All of that almost becomes secondary. Then I start to get worried about the start of the season, right? Is he going to be rusty? God, there's that rust conversation with him again. Like, it just never goes away. He will probably go an entire offseason without getting hit. When they go to their joint practices, who is it? Is it the Vikings? Vikings. 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 So we play them, uh, you know, we game two of the preseason. I'd imagine they're going to be yelling at the Vikings, go, don't touch him. That's usually the rule in joint practices anyway. They're full go in sessions and just not on the quarterback. Ryan, he will probably enter the season not taking a hit for almost a calendar year. And that's maybe I'm making too much out of that. It's more about making the right reads and making the right throws and getting used to Jerry Judy and things like that. But it's something to be thought about where he said, you know, we got to see how this all goes. I don't have a deadline. I got a deadline. I have a deadline. And it's week one of the season. The final thing I want to hear from Deshaun Watson is exactly that. This season. The question was, how big is this upcoming season for you? We all know the first two didn't go the way we wanted. So how big is this season for you, Deshaun Watson? Uh, for me, it's, a, it's another opportunity for myself to just get on the field. Um, I, I'm not making it bigger than what it, it naturally is. Um, if I would have played the full year and we would have won the Super Bowl, it would have been the same same idea um, and vice versa. So for me, it's just taking it one day at a time, building the leadership that we built and carried over from last year um, and, and getting this team exactly where we need to get to uh, and get ready to play each and every week. Video audio courtesy of the Browns. That's not it. That's not it. You know, he knows, I know, you know, the Browns know, Kevin Stefanski knows, my mom knows, your grandma knows, everybody knows what's on the line for this season coming up. So I appreciate Watson for not making it a bigger deal, but deep down, this is the pivotal year of his career with the Cleveland Browns. His tenure, in my opinion, is going to be decided by the 2024 season. I know he's coming off of injury. I know the Browns have bolstered this roster. They are ready to go. It's a big year. And Watson did the right thing. Hey, I'm not looking at this year any different. We got to do the same things. Sure. Go ahead. But it's eventually rubber's going to hit the road here. It's eventually going to be coming that time. We got to decide what this is. And the thing that he said there, right? If he'd have played the full year and we'd have gone and won the Super Bowl, it'd be the same thing. This is crazy. Not that I have a Super Bowl win to compare it to, but I think this pressure is much more than it would have been had they gone and won the Super Bowl. Here's my point. 
we win the Super Bowl last year with Deshaun Watson. The pressure then becomes to try to win another one. But you already got the one. And you can sit back and say, you, you always did that. The pressure this year is potentially a giant shift in the organization. A giant shift for this franchise for it to potentially come unraveled. That is a thousand times more pressure in my opinion. I think this season has more pressure on it as opposed to if you would have won the Super Bowl because you don't know where we're at. And there is an unfortunate path that might be taken where it all comes unglued, man, where this all comes falling apart. I don't want to live in that world. I don't want to think about that. And I'm all for Deshaun Watson going out there, playing extremely well. They'll restructure that deal, and he's here for another seven years. I'd love to live in that world. I would. But the pressure is so much more. Because there's the unknown. Because you don't know what is going to happen. And the thing is, we're not giving enough credit that Watson could come back and be just fine and other things start to become an issue. Maybe the defense isn't quite what you thought it was. Maybe the receipt. I don't, you know what I mean? Like all this other stuff that goes along with it. We're putting the focal point on Deshaun Watson because he's the quarterback, because of the contract, and because of the injuries. I don't think we're giving enough credit, Ryan, that other things might screw up for this team this year. But it all still comes back to the same point. It's got to be on this year. So I appreciate Watson disarming a little bit to say, I'm approaching it the same way that I would any year. But, bro, we can't. We can't. I'm not. I don't think the fans are. And I don't think deep down he is. Or no, the Browns. No, I mean, you were spot on. You talk about it. Yeah, of course, there's important pieces. There's Miles. There's Denzel. If he's healthy. I mean, anything can happen. Anything can go wrong in an in a 18-week se- or eighteen week season. Excuse me. But it does. We've been talking about it all offseason. Everybody knows everything falls under Sean Watson. We've seen how good teams can be, but that doesn't matter. It's all moot if you don't have an elite quarterback at the level of the Patrick Mahomes, of the Josh Allens. You're going to get nowhere. And that's unfortunately what happened when you brought Joe Flacco and you had the magic, but it ran out. You need Deshaun Watson to be 100% healthy because that's the only way you're going to get the Deshaun Watson that you traded for, that you gave up so much for, that you gave a historic haul for. And talk about pressure. Nobody wants to be tied to the worst contract in NFL history. And right now, he's on that projection. He can turn it around easily, obviously. Right now, it's Russ, I would still say, because we have some sliver of hope, whether some people gauge it as a bigger one or a little one. But I'm I'm, I'm still confident, Matt. But I did find it a little bit interesting. Yeah, he did kind of um, turn, turn gears back at his cheesesteak place when he said, I'm going to be 100% healthy to go week one. I don't know if somebody told him. I appreciate the optimism. I don't know if somebody yeah. told him, maybe let's take it back a little bit. You know, we don't want to give false false hope here. See, but it was a little bit interesting of a little change of uh, direction there see, for Sean. See, see, but here's the thing, though. What he said is what I have to have. The fr- I'm talking about his restaurant, right? Because when the season kicks off, I will have no excuses. That's the thing. That's the other issue in all this is that me as the fan, I'm going to look at the first game of the season, and I don't care. And that's not right, because he could still be injured. He could still be having problems. There could still be a setback, which I don't really want. But that's the problem. When we kick off the season, it's go time. I've got no room for anything else. I've got no room for, again, a serious shoulder injury. But I won't have, and and, and that's wrong of me, but I can do that because I'm a fan. When we kick the season off, I'm going to ask them to go out in there and win a lot of football games. I don't care about anything else. Right or wrong, that's how it's going to be. So again, I appreciate where Watson, at that point of his restaurant, saying, no, I'm going to be good. I'm going to be good to go. It gave us a little confidence. It gave us a little, like, breather. And we didn't ask the question this morning, because we've already kind of talked about it, of the Chubb versus Watson injury. We've actually asked, how concerned are you about Deshaun Watson's shoulder injury, right? And a lot of people came out somewhere in the middle of like, I'm a little concerned, but nothing crazy, right? It's all going to go away. It's all going to go away. That third week of September, second week of September, whenever it is when they kick off, that's all going to go away. You got to get to that point. And it might not be 100%. It might be that 70%. Doesn't matter. I'm still asking him to go out there and play well and go win games. Let's hear from Kevin Stefanski now. So we spoke yesterday on a litany of things as well. First up from Coach, where do you think Deshaun Watson is at right now? He's, they have a very, very good plan. 
uh, Deshaun, the medical team, uh, of ramping him up and, and throwing and, and getting, you know, he's doing all the things he's supposed to be doing when it comes to rehab. So when we get to those points in, in OTAs and minicamp, we'll, we'll go with what's uh, suggested by the medical team. But he's doing a great job. I thought it was interesting. I, I kind of wanted that question, uh, video and audio courtesy of the Browns. I wanted to know if he was going to throw during this period, if this was something that he eventually might hit that. Now, right now in these phases, so these OTA phases that they go through, they're only in the weight room in the classroom. They're actually not even on the field right now. They're in the classroom going over stuff, installing this, doing that, working out, that kind of stuff. So I just wondered, and I don't think Stefanski would ever get the answer, Ryan, because you don't want to, oh yeah, he's going to throw next week, right? You, you, you just got to let it go slow with that kind of stuff. But I wondered what that plan is, just if he's eventually going to throw. But again, they're all leaning back on the medical team to kind of make and pivot the moves that they really need to. We'll see how it plays out. And you know people here, especially, not our faults, but yeah, we got caught up in last year. What, oh, was, yeah. what was the magic word, Matt? Zip. Yeah. It was zip. He's got if, it. He's back. If I see if I see a video of Deshaun Watson coming back and his zip isn't there, people are going to freak out for no reason. They, I mean, be out there with a the radar gun. Yeah. Like, all right, what do you got it, here over your man? Let's go. Yeah. It's like, it's like, come on. But no, um... I expect soon, hopefully, to see video of him throwing because it would be encouraging that, at the right. least. I think we all need to see that eventually. Because now, if you he need was proof. supposedly throwing, it'd be nice to see it. You're right. There's going to be football people out there ask, oh, hey, did you see the, did you see the, uh, the, the angle the, of projection the, 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 on the that The tilt throw. on the football, Ryan. Did you see the RPMs on the football? It's looking good, man. Arm strength is just one thing. I, I had somebody tell me this a while ago on Watson. They go, you know, yeah, the shoulder is a major part. But let's not forget the legs are just fine. And I'm not asking him to run as much because that's kind of when he got hurt. But to make the plays, you still need the legs there for him as well. So the plan is there. We'll see how it goes. The other major injury facing the Cleveland Browns is Nick Chubb. Question to Kevin Stefanski yesterday. Has a timeline now been crystallized? Good word usage there. With Nick Chubb coming off these surgeries, a better idea of when he's going to be able to return. Video audio, audio courtesy of the Browns. Here's Kevin Stefanski on Nick Chubb. I, I don't know that we'll go past you know today and this week. Or at least that's the way I'm looking at it. Uh, I can promise you, he's working very hard. Uh, early in the morning, uh, he, he's here. He's 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 attacking his rehab. Uh, that's the best way I can put it. Um, when he's ready, he'll be ready. That's a great coaching cliche. He was really attacking the rehab. He attacked the playbook, Ryan. He's really gotten in here and got it done. That being said, about Nick Chubb, isn't it interesting the dichotomy? No, $2 word there for you. Between Watson and Chubb. I don't think I've met nor talked to a Browns fan that has a doubt about Nick Chubb's ability to return. Why is that? Because Nick Chubb was viewed as an elite running back before he got hurt. Yeah. What's the flip? Deshaun Watson, his elite status had been erased. That's something else when we talk about these guys. Watson at one point was elite. Ryan, that was four years ago. Four years ago. The suspension? Really, I'm, I'm talking about the year off in, in Houston. Mm -hmm. Then the suspension here. Now the injuries. I don't think you find anybody that would call Deshaun Watson elite today. Now what you grab onto is you believe the return to elite. That's why it's so different between these two. If you had Deshaun Watson... In the place that Nick Chubb was, I think we're singing a different song this morning. We're having a different conversation. You feel more optimistic about the season. But it comes back to position, certainly, but also what they showed you right before they got hurt. Yeah, I was going to say, and, and it's a thousand times easier for Nick. And this isn't talking about the injury. I'm not talking right. about coming back from their specific injuries. That's not what I'm talking about. But it's a thousand times easier for Nick Chubb to come off an injury, get in that backfield, and do what he's been doing his whole career. You know, find you, the gaps. You, you, he's an you, elite you, player. He's an elite playmaker. He's one of the best, if not the best, at his position. Deshaun Watson now, who has yet to put together a complete set of games that we can look at as a sample size, now has to come back from yet another injury and now adjust to what's going to be an insanely tough schedule, as we saw. I think it was, what, the 30th tough schedule in the NFL? That, I got some he's, people on that. He's got everything yeah. stacking against yeah. him. Yeah, that's the only good point. Warren Sharp, I sent this out yesterday at Matt Fontaine 83. Warren Sharp did his uh, statistical breakdown. The Browns have, like, the third or fourth hardest schedule. I got some snarky replies to say, yeah, look at the rest of the AFC North. Because, like, the Steelers have the second hardest, and the Ravens are only one spot ahead of us because we play yeah, each other. Yeah, but I could go right back and say the Bengals have the second easiest. Yeah, yeah. 
And that's, I mean, out your according you're, to these, these right? Are my, and and yeah. again, how he looks at it is their win projection and what they did last year uh, with everything going on. So you do have a really tough schedule, but I guess the whole point is. I can give you a vision of Nick Chubb hitting a hole and ripping off a 20-yard run, and you don't even think twice about it. Watson stuff, you're like, eh, eh. You got to want to see it. You got to see it. Final thing from Kevin Stefanski I want to get to here. The other injuries that nobody's talking about, Jack Conklin, Jed Wills, Dewan Jones, Coach Stefanski, how are your tackles looking? Oh, they're, they're all doing great. Uh all, all of them are at different points in their rehab. They, those are three different injuries, same position, but three different injuries. So we're going to treat them as such. But uh, again, th these guys are working very, very hard uh, to get back ASAP. Uh, video courtesy of the Browns there. I Can I rip it apart for just a second? Sure. They're all at different points in their rehab. This is just me. That sounds like maybe one of them is behind. Now. All three were injured at different points of the say, season. You would hope Conklin. And exa you would think he'd be the furthest along. Then Wills, then Dewan Jones, because that was the order of the injuries there, right? I get it. And to his point, they're all different injuries. What we all wanted him to do was come out yesterday and be like, yeah, Dewan Jones, our starting right tackle, and Jed Wills, your starting left tackle. Like, that is a big part, excuse me, of what this season's going to be. The reason I jump on the they're not, you know, they're all in different spots is you got to decide that tackle stuff in, in August. So what I want is all three of those guys healthy and out there competing for a new offensive line. God, what's that guy's name? Andy? Andy, Andy Dickerson. Dickerson. Thank you. Welcome to town, Andy. Good luck. You're going to have to make that decision in training camp. So I need those guys. They'll have load management days. I get it. You're going to need them out there so you can have as many reps as you can get to make this decision. Now, I say that to say this. You've got years of banked reps. You know what D Jack Conklin looks like in this offense. You know what Jed Wills. The unknown is Dewan Jones. And I think if you if I had to make a decision today, if I if you told me right now, Matt, you got to decide what your offensive line is. Do you know what I'm going with? I would go with Conklin and Wills. That's what I would do, too. Dewan Jones, who played amazing, and I don't want him to take this as a personal shot, but that's a tough thing to swallow as a young player. Like, dude, you balled out. You played your ass off, and we're still going to bench you. Your best bet is to go with the more known. And also with the guys that have more money tied up in them. And you sit with Dewan Jones and go, hey, man, we were playing on red shirt in you last year. Things happen. Injuries could happen again. Don't be dissuaded. Don't be discouraged. Keep fighting forward. You're going to be an important part of this football team moving forward. So if they start with that base of it being Wills and Conklin, you tell Dewan Jones, get out there and make his heart on us. The other option would be you move on from Jack Conklin. And I know Greg Newsom spoke about that yesterday, and so did Denzel about all the trades with him and all that kind of stuff. I, 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 it'd be hard to move Conklin. It would be. What's his deal? Was it 13 something this year? But I like the fact that they have the luxury. Oh, at least you got the guys. You have the luxury. At least you got the guys. Yeah, you have the luxury bearing injury that you can have Dewan Jones here on a rookie deal. He's due 13.8. 13.8 of his money. He's due 15 and then 15 again. Are those void years? Huh. That's going to be tough, man. If at this point you have to move on from him. He's got a cap. I guess maybe he's not going anywhere. I don't know. He's got cap hits of $19 million each in 25 and 26. With two void years moved in. Dead money would be 7-4 and 2. Cap savings of 11-6 and 14-4 in 25-26. So he's movable. And that's just a cut. I don't know if you're going to be able to trade him or not. But you got the guys. At least there is that positivity you're trying to pick between three it's going to be a tough thing to do but at least you got three viable guys yeah, that you're and there's no start, point you know? in cutting him at this point i yeah. mean you tell no no no, yeah. no no i don't think so either but i'm just saying you're only going to start two and that's where the wills thing you're not going to pay him to be on the bench no and if anything you know dewan jones will be a starter after next year anyway that's what i'm saying maybe and, they I, go to him and be like dude we're going to spend this whole year flipping you over to left tackle because we know jed wills probably going to be here right yeah and, and if right? anything you tell dewan jones to go look at last year odds are you're you're going to end up right back in the trenches oh i'm sure right you're going to be right there and again injuries what has been the, the uh, offensive line is like your starting rotation in baseball the five that you start with is very rarely yeah. the five you finish with there was some insane stat that i think only i i'm shooting from the hip here i could be wrong on this 
I think there was only one team in the NFL last year that had all five of their starting offensive linemen start every single game last year. I believe it. And I think it was the Cowboys. That's, I don't know why. That can't be right. Because didn't Biotish get hurt? I don't know. He's gone. He's not there anymore. I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure there was only one off uh, one team last year that all five of their offensive linemen start every single game. It doesn't happen. So you're going to have that option there of getting those guys in. Uh, we got plenty coming up here. I've got more football to get to. I've got a seven-round mock from Dane Brugler. We'll get to that coming up. Dude, an explosive story just got released this morning on ESPN about Bill Belichick. Quote, Robert Kraft called Arthur Blank and told him, don't you trust Bill Belichick? Woo! Yeah, buddy. That's kind of scummy. Kraft was a big part of the reason why the Falcons didn't hire Bill. But could you imagine this? I mean, not even imagine this happened. Inside Bill Belichick's failed job hunt, reporting from Don Van Natta Jr., Seth Wickersham, who always just drops bombs on ESPN, and Jeremy Fowler. On the morning of January 25th, a few hours before the Falcons announced Raheem Morris is their new coach, Bill Belichick believed the job was his. Did he, did he, is there quotes? There's quotes in this, buddy, from sources. Again, apparently, Robert Kraft called Arthur Blank and said, don't trust Bill Belichick. <laughs> about stabbing your friend Woo! in the back? I mean, dude, that, wow. That just came out this morning. You know how much money Bill has made, they, Robert they, Kraft? That's, and some people get into this about what a... Sc- I'm pushing everything. Do you have the boost? Yeah? We're working on it. All right, good. Hold off on it. Let's do it right now. We'll tell you about Tipico in a second, folks. Fontana 100 is code. This this stuff is insane. This article just came out like who, a half an hour. This? Don Van Natta Jr., Seth Wickersham, and Jeremy Fowler. Oh wow! So this is this is all about Bill Belichick. They started the 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 title of the article is that Bill got voted off the island. So basically, he got ousted. So the uh, and I haven't read through this, so I apologize. These were just some of the quotes. Kraft found Bill extremely difficult and obstinate and a kind of stubborn and in the way not worthy of his trust and also very, 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 three, arrogant is what Robert Kraft said Bill Belichick was. Why would he call Arthur Blank, though? Like, why would he care? Dude, it is a good old boys club to no end. And... There is, I, I don't want to say an element of stabbing a guy, because you're right. You'd be like, what, what What do you care about the Falcons? Who cares if he goes and takes the Falcons job? You moved on. He has moved on. So again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to piece through this, because here's some of the quotes that have gone on. So again, it starts out by saying that the morning the Falcons hired Raheem Morris, Bill Belichick woke up that morning and thought he was getting this job. An ESPN source on Belichick's inability to pursue the job said he was, quote, essentially voted off the island. Um, I'm trying to find these quotes that, that are the really, you know, kind of big one. Because, okay, so they're running through all the history, right? They win all these Super Bowls. Uh, uh, Belichick has signed a deal to go on the Manning cast now. Okay, so that's all we got that. Principal owner Josh Harris of Washington, who seemed to be another good fit, and multiple sources said Belichick was very interested. Grew up in Annapolis, Maryland. Combination of hometown hometown ties and football acumen might have helped the commanders in landing Belichick. However, principal owner Josh Harris, who's been, dude, he's meeting with these guys at Topgolf. Did you see that yesterday? Commanders are taking these guys to Topgolf. It's kind of weird. I love Topgolf, but anyway. Did he put him out there and get him in a competition to see who's more competitive? I, I digress. Josh Harris got his fingers in everything, right? He paid all this money for the commanders. He's all in this, whatever. According to this article, principal owner Josh Harris had spoken privately with Kraft about Belichick and told his confidence early in December that he respected Belichick but wasn't going to hire him. They, of course, hired Dan Quinn. The Carolina Panthers briefly discussed Belichick 
but this offseason decided to pass. David Teffer, David Teffer often sifts through data to critique his own coach's play calling, and he said, according to a source, it was tough to do with Belichick as a figurehead. What does that sound like? Old school versus the analytics, right? That's Wait, match. who just said that? That was about the charge. I'm sorry, about the Panthers. David Tepper runs statistical analysis on his coach's play calling. And he didn't think that was going to mesh well with Belichick. Okay. So he goes with Canales. But they also get rid of Frank Reich, who I thought, I, I don't know, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Belichick. Maybe David Tepper should just take a step back. Well, Tepper needs to take a step back. So does Josh Harris. Belichick was not interested in the Chargers job. And the Raiders, who, of course, just got rid of a couple of Belichick disciples, Mark Davis considered reaching out, but removed the interim tag from Antonio Pierce, which he sure damn well have done, which is what he did. That's his job. I wonder why he wasn't interested in the Chargers. Um, It said here the Chargers were looking for a long-term solution, and Belichick's window felt like at most three to five years, according to sources. So that sounds like the Chargers weren't interested in Belichick, not Belichick. Maybe, right, vice versa. The Titans had some of Belichick's former players on there. He wanted to collaborate with Ryan Carthon, their GM. A comment echoed, but he was, uh, here's, okay. A source with the Titans said that a head coaching vacancy this year and Belichick's ability to build a culture at this stage is an issue. He was so stubborn with the offense, he ran the offense down to a pulp and Mac Jones looked like a quarterback capable early but it's not the same, and the arrogance stopped it there. That left only the Falcons. So again, I'm reading through this article where apparently Robert Kraft called Arthur Blank and said, don't trust him. All right, here we go. On January 15th, four days after Kraft bid farewell to Belichick, Falcons owner Arthur Blank met one-on-one with Belichick aboard his 290-foot, $180 million super yacht. Next time you go buy some screws at Home Depot, just remember that you paid for Arthur Blank's super yacht. Unreal. It's Belichick's first official job interview since 1998. A source close to Belichick said, I think Blank came away from the boat thinking this is my guy. Keep that in mind. Despite the friendly session, an unthinkable happened for the billionaire Arthur Blank and a legendary coach. They checked each other's references Blank spoke twice on the phone to Robert Kraft. Among NFL owners, Blank considers Kraft his closest friend. And publicly, they have supported, uh, expressed support for each other. Also publicly, Kraft supported Bill Belichick. But in a conversation with Blank, Kraft delivered a stark assessment of Belichick's character, according to a source. A close craft friend and a longtime Belichick confidant saying Robert called Arthur to warn him not to trust Bill. This account was also backed up by another close friend of the group. Multiple sources said Kraft spoke with some candor. Candor, not candor. Sounds like a Star Wars place. Candor. When he spoke to Blank about Belichick, And said he was a big part of the reason why the Falcons didn't hire him. Sources said Kraft made it clear to Arthur Blank. You will never have a warm conversation with Bill Belichick. Blank's like coaches or Blank likes coaches who feel part of the family. And it wasn't going to be that way with Bill Belichick. The same source did not know if Kraft had warned Blank about Belichick's trustworthiness, but he said both Kraft felt betrayed by the coach. I don't think they're trying to hurt Belichick, he said, but I don't think they were trying to help him either. It wasn't they were trying to sink him. It was finished as an effective head coach. Just look at his last four years, a disaster. If you're Arthur Blank, why would you want that? A source close to Robert Kraft said, Kraft found Bill to be extremely difficult and abstinent, a kind of stubborn and, in the end, not worthy of his trust and very, very, very arrogant. I mean, I believe it. I could I could easily see scenarios where Robert Kraft and Bill Belichick aren't having the most heart-to-heart conversations. Like, I could see them butting see, heads like, on a lot. In in, And I still think the Falcons in, like, made the, the right decision. I think they did, too. I'm a little – I guess I'm not shocked. I didn't think Belichick was going to get a job. I did. Because – 
I think two two things. Number one, kind of why the Chargers didn't want him. You're going to bring this guy in for a couple of years. Yeah, he might be able to turn it around great. It is very clear and obvious that Bill Belichick's time has passed. Just like his Tom Brady's time has passed too, right? There was a time that it was all good. That it was working because he was at the prime of his game. Because he was good at picking players. He had a system that worked and he had Tom Brady. When you don't have all those things, it's over. I think the thing that might bo- or that we might find shocking is you believe in sports of the fairy tale ending, where these guys just are all buddy buddy and they win a Super Bowl and they walk it off. It's not that way, because what made Bill Belichick Bill Belichick was his arrogance, was his cockiness. You can't change that at the end. The issue is when you're not playing well and you're not developing players, that cockiness and arrogance you come off like an a hole. And Kraft Kraft got sick of it, which I think is interesting. Which I guess is not, because I'm actually going to counter my point right away. In a way, Robert Kraft's loyalty was to the NFL, not Bill Belichick. That's not shocking, because what he did was he went to his friend, fellow billionaire, owner of a team, and he said, don't do it. That's also looking out for the NFL, is it not? By trying to say that hiring this guy's a mistake. So, That's not a shock that Robert Kraft's loyalty lies with the shield. They always say protect the shield, the integrity of the shield, right? Robert Kraft was looking out for the NFL, not for Bill Belichick. That part doesn't shock me at all. It's to the lengths that he went here to basically tell Robert Kraft, or tell Arthur Blank, excuse me, you can't trust this guy. Yeah, I guess that just goes to show you I didn't realize how close Arthur Blank was with Robert Kraft. Yeah, I knew they were, they're, they're buddy buddies. The, yeah, thought yeah. That, the thought that came to my head was it sounds as though Robert Kraft ultimately puts the majority of the blame for the Patriots failed last three, four seasons on Bill Belichick. So then that makes me wonder, why'd you give up Mac Jones for a bag of chips? Because they're just ending that era right but if anything you could just your still point, draft a quarterback right. your and keep him as is, your backup your, your point you is, gave him up for literally nothing if belichick was the issue then maybe there's still something there with mac jones i think they probably evaluated say mac jones is broke broke he's broke broke ain't no coming back from that they're also going to take a quarterback at three they don't want mac jones lingering around so if you sure. look at it from this standpoint you think mac jones is beyond broken you've got this again kind of with this flacco thing you want you don't want him hanging around and you're going to go in a different direction with the quarterback anyway, go for it. And then did they not sign Jacoby Brissett? Yeah, they did. There you go. You don't need Mac Jones anymore. And it's also like, hey, like, this is a clean cut. Like, we're done. And they're going to tank this year, probably get another high pick, and hopefully develop, whether it's Drake May or Jaden Daniels or whoever they take, that's fine. They're taking a quarterback. There's no, 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 no debate on that, in my opinion. So you're, you're clean cut. The thing is, with dynasties like this, and some people are waking up this morning having this conversation about the Warriors, right? Because that dynasty is over. They're done. And they'll maybe hold on to Steph. What's Steve Kerr's future? They'll get Draymond out of there. I think Clay Thompson's playing somewhere else next year. The end of dynasties very rarely are easy. They're very rarely clean cut and everybody's saying, I wish you well out the door. A lot of times it's this. It's finger pointing, and it's it wasn't my fault. It was their fault because egos get in the way. To build a dynasty, you have to have egos. To build something as great as the 90s Bulls were, as this team with the Warriors, as what the Patriots did, you had a lot of people believe they were the best at what they did. Whether it was a coach, quarterback, point guard, shooting guard, power forward, it didn't matter. You had a lot of people that felt like they were the best. So with that, it innately comes back to, I am the most important key to this whole damn thing. But you got three or four people that feel that way. Go ask Phil Jackson what he thinks he meant to the 90s Bulls. Go ask Michael Jordan. Go ask Pippen. Go ask Rodman. Go ask Steph. Go ask Kerr. Go ask Draymond. Go ask Clay Thompson. Go ask Tom Brady. Go ask Bill Belichick. Go ask Rob Gronkowski. Go ask Mike Vrabel. Like, everybody thinks they got their piece of the pie. Now, I'm not sitting here saying that Rodman was more important than Jordan or Rob Gronkowski is more important than Tom Brady, but you start to get to that battle, right? You start to wonder. So when you have the egos, you don't just turn those off when it's time to go home. You don't turn those off when it's all come crashing down. Dynasties don't last forever. They don't. It Sports are so cyclical. And what you try to avoid 
He's being down at the bottom forever. But Ryan, like, I again, you have your dynasties that sometimes can go 10 years. There, there are almost no teams that say they avoided it. The Yankees sucked ass for a little while, right? There was a time the Detroit Pistons were it in the NBA. Look at them now. Look at the Patriots now. So on the way out the door like this, I can't say that I'm shocked by it. But it's just that Robert Kraft, again, from this really interesting article this morning on ESPN, Robert Kraft called Arthur Blank and told him not to trust Bill Belichick. To go to that length, to not even be like, yeah, you know, hire him, do whatever you want. Or I need to step out. Like, I, I think it's hard because like if one of your good friends came to you and said, I need your help. I need a truthful answer on this. You're going to give it to him. But like Arthur Blank going to that length to be like, nah, man, don't do it. I guess don't kudos to Arthur Blank because if uh, my buddy beat me, uh, come back 28 to 3 in the Super Bowl and made me somebody, they brought that up in the article, right? They brought I'd that be, up in the article, I, yeah. I, I think I'd cut ties with that. Yeah, fact. no, I understand exactly where we're coming from on that. That's part of the article, too. But like, it's so interesting. Now they're starting to get some other like tweets coming out about this and people just kind of jumping on some of the some of the things that are coming out from this. Um, no Falcons exec had him in their top three. So that's the other thing, too, is it wasn't even just an Arthur Blank thing. None of the execs wanted him either. And sources say Kraft raised issues to Blank about trustworthiness inside a few strange days back in January. Sources believe that Belichick had the momentum coming off of Arthur Blank's yacht, but he finished behind a trio of coordinators in Atlanta's job with scarcity of alternatives. Mm -mm -mm. This is great, man. This is interesting stuff. Will he get another job? Do you think Bill Belichick's going to get another job? Probably not. I don't think so. I don't think so. He's going to fall short of Don Shula. And again, it's a great ride until it's not. It goes well until it doesn't. And that's exactly what happened with the Patriots. It was a great ride until it wasn't. And I don't even know, you know, this, this is not a point of this article, but the handling of the Tom Brady stuff with Belichick, how did that impact things there in New England? You know how it played out. Brady obviously got the upper hand on all that, but can't go forever. And when it comes down to it, Arthur Blank got Robert Kraft on the horn. He said, don't hire Bill Belichick. I feel is evil it bad, world we live in. Is it bad that I feel a little bad for Bill Belichick? I don't. I will shed zero tears. I mean, again, guys got all these Super Bowls, made all this money. I get it. But the fact that I know that guy lives, breathes, and eats football, and now he doesn't get to do it anymore. Like, he'll be on the Manning cast. I think he's got jack nothing to provide to the media. I'm sorry. I don't think he's got anything. I think he's a really smart mind. I know he's cranky and ornery and all that kind of stuff. I don't think it's going to play on TV. I, I really think, don't. I heard he's going to go just smoke some ayahuasca with Aaron Rodgers. They do that. And that's going to completely flip his personality. Rodgers back in. Dude, why? I shouldn't even give him the time of day. I try not to. Can I tell you? Did I tell you I've unfollowed Pat McAfee? I can't do it anymore. I just can't. You know who else I unfollowed? Dan Orlovsky? Yeah. Yeah. He hit me with one of those rise and grind quotes last week, and I said, all right, I think I'm done. That's enough. I need a Dan Orlovsky just football Twitter and then a Dan Orlovsky life Twitter, and I'll just follow the football one. I got it. Rise and grind, man. I got it. He's going to give you a call about some great opportunity that he's got, pyramid scheme. You just sell this, and then you get 10 other people to join in, and then you make your money back. Okay, Dan. Got it. Good stuff there. Wow, what an article this morning. All right, I've got a seven-round mock I want to get to in hour two. It's from Dane Brugler. All the Browns picks. I don't like it. And th that being said, Dane is well, – here's a great question. Who are your favorite draft people? For me, Matt Miller, Daniel Jeremiah. Ah, Gene, yeah, DJ. I mean, he does all of football. But I love Matt Miller, and Dane Brugler's right up there for me too. Yeah, I like Field a lot. I like feel like Jordan Reed. They're great. So I say that to say that Dane Brugler is is high on my list of draft people. But I don't like the draft that he gave for the Cleveland Browns. We'll get to that coming up in hour two. We got plenty with the Cavs as well because it's official now. The time for Saturday, a little earlier than we thought. We knew we were going to be the first game, but that's kind of an early one uh, to get to as well. And then we got the guards, baby. Not yet. We sent, I sent it, right? Yeah, no, it's, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, they got it. Oh, they did put it in, but then they didn't.
they forgot something out. Yeah. That's all right. We'll get it kind of done on that. Guards last night, though, man. That's a nice win there for them. Bats are hot again. Yeah, man. Hot again. Hot again. Gabriel Arias is on a tear. No, it's going to be awesome. The thing is, I look at the ca- I look at the Guardians. Sorry, I'm, look, I'm, I'm getting ready to go for all the Cavs and all that kind of stuff. For the Guardians, yeah, some pitching woes here and there, some issues here and there. But if your bats are going to keep showing up the way that they're showing up, you're going to be in a lot of these games. And I think I saw from Reflog this morning, you wake up with the best record in baseball. Is best, that a fact? Best winning percentage. Best winning percentage of baseball. Best winning percentage. We've missed some games, 12 and 5. Stone Set- cold fact. Yeah. 12 and 5, man. Only a game up on the Royals. We're still early. That's all right. We got plenty of time to go. But we'll get to our Guardians boost a little bit later as they're taking on the Red Sox. They finished that out, right? Tonight's the last game of that series, right? I believe so. I believe so. Where are they at after this? You should look that up. We are home against the A's. Oh, we welcome Boston back to town next week. Little weekend series against the A's. All right. Get fat on them. Oh, no. We have one more tomorrow. Boston, 135. I thought it was weird that today was not the getaway day. Tomorrow is 135. We'll take on Boston for a little four-game set. Guardians starting to turn things around. It's great. Cavs time is out, so we'll discuss that more coming up. I thought it was really interesting on Chris Fedor's article talking about Donovan Mitchell and the excitement around this postseason and what might mean for his future. We got it all for you right here on Big Play. Folks, Tipico, NBA Plus. What did I tell you last night? I told you. You Lakers Kings. You went to Lakers Kings. I did not bet the Kings. I should have, but I did bet the Lakers. Folks, we have an amazing promotion with going with our friends at Tipico. Here's how it goes. You place a same-game parlay on any NBA game, NBA playoff game. For every three-point shot made in that game, you will get a bet credit back into your account. That's how this is going to go with Tipico. And what I love about Tipico is so great. You are going to bet like you normally would. You're going to bet like you would just on these games. So why not jump in and grab the rewards, the cashback that we tell you so much about? That adds up. The boost, the parlays, and you can get your bonus bets for new customers. So here's what you do. If you're a new customer, you've not signed up for Tipico, now is the time. Use that code FONTANA100 when you sign up. You deposit and bet $25 on whatever you want. When that game ends, get $100 in your bonus bets. For new customers, terms, conditions apply. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. They have the highest cash back in the industry. Get up to 5% cash back on your bets. Clear, automatic, and unlimited rewards just for betting like you normally would. And there's value in almost every bet that you place. Here's where it is again. Bet on the NBA playoffs with Tipico, a same-game parlay on any NBA playoff game, and you'll receive a bonus for every three-point shot made in that game. Can I go to the games last night? How many threes did we have made there? Here we go. Here we go. Scores last night. Sucked about Zion getting hurt, but I was happy because I had the the Lakers, so I'm not that upset about it. Lakers-Pelicans last night combined for 14 and 9. So you got 23 threes last night. Cash back on those. Warriors Kings, 10 and 18, 28. Could you imagine if you did a little same game parlay? 28, 24, 42. Let's go. Sounds like free money. That's free money to me is what it sounds like to me. Get those same game parlays in for the playoffs. And again, every three-point shot. You'll receive a bonus for that. So check it out with our friends at Tipico. They are the absolute best. All right, we got plenty coming up as well. We got to talk about the guards. We'll get back into the Cavs. Got a little Browns, including the seven-round mock. Let's get to it. Break a little early here. We'll get to the morning update. Stay with us. Fontana Show right here on Big Play. Well, how do they know I'm doing this? Did somebody leak this out? It's social media. Oh. That's the way social media works now. I thought maybe you were just running that yep, 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 yep. Welcome to Big Play, a sports media team that started back in 2014, and now we're not in a garage. Look at us, incorporating some of Cleveland's favorite sports personalities, bringing you fun and compelling content from downtown Cleveland. Coming to you live from the shores of Lake Erie in Burke Lakefront Airport, join Team Big Play for all the best sports talk in Ohio. Check us out on social media at Big Play, bringing you fun and compelling content from downtown Cleveland. Anthony Schlegel, just how physical he was. You know, saw, saw the, the girth and the power and everything he was bringing to the table, especially when he was a nice, beefy, 
255, playing middle linebacker. We were called soft last year. You don't want to be soft, especially when you come to the playoffs. So that's going to be a process throughout this season of establishing us as a harder team here in the How does an Ohioan build the perfect parlay? Who's got something? Big guys looking for long odds. The kids in Columbus are covering better than anyone. And at even odds. If it's even, I'm leaving. Listen, our championship DVD starts today. All right? Dude, I just got an invite to a Cincy playoff watch party. Shut up. Cincy, State, Cleveland, the perfect parlay. I'm a genius. For the best odds on Ohio sports, bet with your cojones. It is Spanish, dummy. Bet with typical sportsbook. I don't buy into this nonsense, this conspiracy nonsense that he's got his money and he's dogging it. He, that's ridiculous. We got Cavs schedule out. We got more Guardians to get to. Seven round mock from the Browns. Welcome back. Matt Fontana. Ryan Tyler. Did you get your thousand follow, by the way? Oh, uh, let me go look. Go look. It's follow Ryan. Time. Somebody go follow Ryan at Ryan Tyler 33. So we nope. can get damn it. Somebody follow Ryan. What you're gonna nine. what you're gonna get is I know, it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna flop. It's gonna like go up and then go back down to nine hundred something. Yeah, that's cause somebody's just gonna be an a-hole. And go ahead and drop back out of it there. But still, nonetheless, go follow Ryan at Ryan Tyler 33 so he can get a thousandth follow. We'll give you a shout out here on the show. But nonetheless, follow there. Let's get to it. Schedule, guards, Browns, and a retirement last night. I even throw that on you. Jeff Rimmer retired last night as the Blue Jackets longtime TV uh, announcer. Shout out to him. The best. Ryan, take it away. All right, Matt. Well, the Browns' voluntary workouts began yesterday as we're getting closer to the NFL draft and closer to the NFL season. We got to hear from Kevin Stefanski and Deshaun Watson, of course, Matt. Tell me your biggest takeaways. You know, I think the updates were important on uh, the injury front. I want to give credit, and I don't know. I I feel bad because I I should find out who asked this question. I want to give credit where credit is due. Somebody asked Kevin Stefanski. The question was, as far as the offensive meetings at this point, is Dorsey starting to unveil your new playbook? That was a trap question. And Stefanski said, that's what coach is doing right now with the offense and then some of the quarterbacks as well, trying to catch these guys up on a bunch of things that we're doing. Some are the same, some are different, but Coach Dorsey's doing a really nice job. They tried to get him to trip up to say if it was his playbook or not. Because the question comes back of who's calling plays, how much is getting inserted. Listen, they brought Ken Dorsey in to not overhaul the offense. This offense is still going to be Kevin Stefanski's game here. You want to add some wrinkles? You want to add some things that Dorsey has seen? There was something that was lacking. You don't make that move with Alex Van Pelt unless you felt like something was lacking. So that being said, we all wonder who's still calling plays. So I appreciate whoever asked that question to try to give him a little sneak there to see if he'd trip up and say, oh, it's his playbook or it's my playbook. Um, That was pretty much it. I wanted the quick injury updates, which you did. You've got these meetings. There's really not much else to be had. At this point, again, it's injury updates. Now, we speak to Andrew Barry tomorrow. Or no, wait. What's today? Wednesday. I've been all thrown off, man. Tomorrow, Andrew Barry will speak. Then maybe we'll have an idea on some contract questions. He'll be asked at nauseam about the restructure of Watson, the restructure of Cooper, the Jeremiah Wusukoromoa deal. 
It's a lot more. I'm actually more interested to talk to Barry tomorrow than I was Stefanski yesterday. To the players, uh, Watson said he feels good, which is int- you know, which is fine. You know, Denzel Ward also spoke yesterday, and he basically made the comment about keeping that cornerback room together. They hear the trades, and if you watch our show, you know I'm not trying to trade away Greg Newsom. I'm fine with Greg Newsom being here. Stop smiling, right? I'm not trying to trade him away. It's just that makes a little sense to me, you know? I get where Denzel's coming for. He wants to go to bat for his guy, and he feels like the corner room, which where they're at, they should be considered one of the better corner rooms in the NFL. I think they are. You have an elite guy in Denzel Ward. You got really solid players in Newsom and MJ. I'm all for it. I'm just, again, reading the tea leaves on this. He's the guy that gets brought up. So other than that, not too much to take away from from today or yesterday, excuse me. But tomorrow, I think it's going to be a really interesting day with Barry. What's he got to say about that Watson restructure? Alrighty, Matt. Well, the Guardians are taking on the Red Sox again tonight. First pitch slated for 7-10. Cleveland's looking for their fourth win in a row, third in a row against the Red Sox. Ben Lively gets a start for the Cleveland Guardians. Lively back. I think you're trying to figure out who that fifth starter is going to be. No one, Gavin Williams, this is still a little bit off. One of these guys might go to the bullpen. But Xavion Curry had a hell of a start the other day, man. I liked what I saw. So now you get Ben Lively in this game tonight. Um, Guardians, I love the scrappiness. I love the fight. This all this this also kind of seems like a team. They don't know any better, right? Just go out there and play. Like just go out there and let it all hang out. Go for it. Um, the thing is, they're taking this Tanner Houck guy on. He's got a two ERA and three starts. That's pretty damn good. Like they've got an uphill battle today, lively with this first start of the season. Um, but still, if the Guardians are going to hit the way they're going to hit, even in that game last night, you got production up and down the lineup. And then when you can start adding some guys in, like Tyler Freeman, who can get some big hits here and there, uh, Esteban Floria, what did he have? Two RBIs in that game yesterday, right? You're starting to figure out your lineup a little bit. Rokio, you know, where Josh Nate, all that kind of stuff. And I know extra innings changes because they got to put runners on and things like that. But you want to know the thing that made me the happiest yesterday, Ryan? One through four combined for seven hits. Three for Quan, two for Jimenez. Quan is unbelievable. Ramirez and man, did he smoke that ball yesterday? Yeah, right that should, yeah. That I don't know how that guy caught it, but all right. Here, I'll even do you one better. Your top three hitters yesterday: six hits, five runs scored, three RBIs, three walks, not a single strikeout. That's how you do it. I like Jimenez in that two hole. They didn't put him there last year because he wasn't hitting. I think Andres Jimenez is back. And you need that, that top of the lineup. You've got some speed. You have some other guys filling in where you need them. Love the bats. Love this offense. Keep it going because it's contagious. You know, hitting becomes the you don't want to be the guy to let the inning down or let the lineup down. They're hitting. They're hitting really well, and I love to see it. All right, well, Matt, a little breaking news. The Browns have officially announced the permanent change to white face masks. Yes. You like it? I do. I do. The white... um, the apparently glossy helmets that they're going back to. The gray never worked. The brown never worked. The white is where it's at. It just, here's my thing on the white face mask. It was the majority of my life, the majority of my Browns fandom since 1999. It makes the brown, it makes the orange pop. It does look it so makes, much better. It looks so much better. And I know that they had to do this change because they're also changing the logo. So you had to wait the two years. I saw everybody dancing on the graves of those just horrible Jets uniforms. The Browns used to have them because they're done finally. There's some bad looks out there. The Browns are now back to a good look. I like the uniforms. The white face mask just makes the orange pop on the helmets, and it looks so much better. It really does. I love it. It's a great change. Um, I, I Here's the other thing, too. Can I send this to JW? or the Haslam's or whoever. Yeah. No more changes. No more. You want to add a third helmet? Do it. They're going to allow third helmets starting next year. Give me an or-, or give me a brown helmet. Give me a white, a brown and an orange helmet. That's all I need, right? Don't change this one anymore. Don't change the uniforms anymore. They're fine the way they are. Don't touch them. That's it. Classic is fine, but uh, this is such a great move. I'm so happy that it's back. 
The first round of the NBA playoffs kicks off this Saturday, Matt. We finally got the times released and the matchups. The Cavaliers and the Magic are going to be the first game, tipping off at 1 p.m., followed by the Suns Timberwolves at 3.30. Knicks, the winner of the East play-in, probably going to be the 76ers. And then followed by Lakers Nuggets, the late game at 8.30. Yeah, I mean, I'm excited that the Cavs, I kind of actually, I don't know. Here's the issue, man. You win... You sit down the rest of that day and you got, it, it, you're just, oh yeah. You just sit back and you're just fat in your chair and you grab a garage beer and you just, oh yeah, man. Woo. But you lose the rest of that day sucks ass. And that's the other issue. Love you guys. Garage beer. I wish I could drink. I'll be drink I'm going to be deleting some beer this weekend. I just got to pick some of that up. Um. That's the issue. You're, you're setting yourself up for success or failure because you got to waste away the rest of the day. One o'clock, dude, that's too early. Can we make it not three o'clock? I'm fine with one. I don't like it. No. All right, hang on. I want to go uh, da, 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 da. Friday. We know Saturday. Give me a little Saturday action here. I don't want to go to next week. Saturday the 20th That's where we're at. 1, 3, 30, 6, and 8, 30. Why is Denver, LA not at 10 o'clock? Why? Why can't you bump everything back in two hours? See, I like it because then I can actually stay up for the whole Nuggets game. I mean, trust me, it's a great day of basketball. But imagine if the Cavs started at 3, 30, right? And the thing is, they did set it up kind of how we projected. They're not going to have and They don't want any overlap with these games. If anything, it's the final few minutes of a game before the other game starts. You're all day. ESPN, ESPN, ABC those in a row um yeah and then again we also have another one o'clock game in there don't we in the series i'm talking about we got another one o'clock before we get to some seven o'clock games i'm pretty sure game two is slated for seven i think it goes one seven seven one again you'd be correct yep yep there it is so um it kind of sucks but again you're in this you're not some of the top teams i understand i get where you're at but um, I just hope that because if they win, then the rest of the day is like euphoria. The yeah. rest of the day, you're just in, in heaven. I probably I'm I not think, sure how much basketball I'll be watching if they lose. That's my whole point. You're going to turn it off and you're not going to want to deal with it. But if they get a win, which I think they will, then you're feeling good for the rest of the day. All right. Well, the West playing games were yesterday. They, tonight is the East playing games, Matt. The Heat take on the 76ers. Philly, a five and a half point favorite. Meanwhile, the Hawks and Bulls. Three and a half point favorite there for Chicago. You went two for two on the West. So give me your projections for the East. Here we go. Give me the Heat plus the points. I think Philly will win, but I think the Heat are going to cover. Okay. I know it's at Philly. I guess I just don't know if I can just buy into, oh, Philly's back and they're good to go. Mmm. I don't like, I'll tell you the one I really like, Bulls minus three all day long. I don't believe in the Hawks for a second against the Bulls. Now you got me rethinking everything. I put the pressure on me. I went for two. I felt so good about the games yesterday. Oh, man. I don't know, man. All right. Give me the Bulls minus three. I'll ride with that. I'll hold on to that one. I guess I'll stick with my gut here. I, 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 I'll tell you this. I, I'm going to guarantee you the Bulls minus three, uh, but I will take the Heat plus the five and a half. That's just kind of where I'm going to go. Okay. All right. All right I feel last... real good about the second one. I don't feel so good about the first one. Well, we shall see. All right. Lastly, for the morning update, the record-breaking numbers are out for WNBA draft. That I was saw, held yeah. Monday night. Average a record 2.45 million, while viewership peaked at 3.09 million. This is the large, or excuse me, the previous draft record was just 601,000 back in 2004 when Diana Tarsar Tarasi went number one overall. Did I say that right? Tarasi. 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 Yeah, Tarasi. Diana Tarasi. I mean, great in uh, the other, you know, you see the Masters numbers way down for Sunday, which is great, but or not good, not good for them, but great for the WNBA. Awesome stuff on that. I think people are invested. Now you know where these ladies are at, what team they're on. You start building that fandom. You can't just create fandom. You got to build it. And I think WNBA is certainly doing that. So great stuff uh, on that. Uh, are, we, are, we, are we still doing it? See how we do. We got damn close yesterday. Yeah, we did. I, we were what? Eight for nine? Yeah. We got help on the other one. 
I'm going to turn my phone over. I don't want to do any help today. Ryan, let's get to the grid. Let's see what we got. Let's see what we got. All right, you know how the grid works. We hate it very much. Let's see how it goes. Timer has started. Let's rock it out. First team off pro. Do Patrick? Yes. Um, Devontae Adams. Devontae Adams. Because, again, I'm assuming at some point in their career. Uh, uh, Luke Keekley. I was going to say Cam Newton, but Luke Keekley is good, too. All right, um, let's open this. Oh, no! No! Oh, no, wow. Ryan, no! It's okay, I think I have another one for you. Go for it, then. Well, hold on. Let's you, well, I'm yelling because we could have used Devontae know, Adams I for know. the Packers and the Raiders, but you think you have another one for that? Well, first, I'm doing Chiefs, Packers, Marquez, Valdez, Scanlon. That's a good one. MVS is correct. You had it. I literally, I saw it pop up. Mark has, right? Yeah. There it is. There it is, yeah. Okay. Um, you think you have another one? Didn't, um, didn't Jordy Nelson play for the Raiders a year? Yeah, he did. Right? That's a good, yeah. No, that's a good pull. That's a good pull. All right. That's a good pull. You're very correct on that. Well done. Well done. All right. Uh, Packers Panthers. That might be a tough one to go. Yeah, I'd like to finish that row kind of out there. But. All right, we'll have to move off. All right, let's go to the Dolphins. I'm just going to start listing names here. Raheem Mostert never played for any of those other teams, I don't think. Um, certainly not. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Chiefs Dolphins. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Tyreek Hill. Yeah. That'd be one we'd be sitting back there like, you idiots. For us. Well, we got it, so don't worry about it. Dolphins Raiders. Ryan Fitzpatrick does not work here, I don't think. I know he played for the Dolphins. I don't think he ever played for the Raiders, though. I'm not high on him. Josh McCown played for the Raiders. Don't think he ever played for the Dolphins. No kickers come to mind here. Did Lamar Miller ever play for the Raiders? No, that's a good pull, though. I forgot about him. I know he went to Houston, but I don't know if he ever actually made it to the Raiders. Um. Oh, I got one for Dolphins Panther. Oh, okay. Our boy, Ted Ginn. Ted Ginn. That's a good pull. Yeah. That's a good pull. Very good pull there. Good one. All right. So we're in a good spot yeah, right good now. Spot. It's a good spot right now. Um. I'm just saying, like, did I did Charles Woodson ever play for Dolphins? No, because I mean, there there have been There's some so many legends. I know, I don't know that were like, wait a minute, we never knew he played. Right? No, no, I get that. I don't know why Larry Zonka came to mind. Like, he played for the Raiders one year. I don't know. Talk about again, legacy type players. Larry Zonka. Frank Gore never played for Dolphins. Did he? No, Mercury Morris. No, there's no way he did right. Now, just charges the one year. All right. Um, Bob Greasy? Can you give me that? Miami. Jason Trusnick? Did he ever play for the Raiders? No. Like, it, we, so here's what he did. Again, my, my, my step cousin, now head coach at Strongsville. He went Jets, Browns, Dolphins. Jets, Browns, Dolphins. Bob Greasy played his whole career with the Byron Miami Jones. Is he still in Miami? That's the thing. We're not good on the linemen. We're always missing linemen on this thing. Mike Kosecki didn't go to the Raiders. Um, Jarvis Landry never went to the Raiders. No. No. Oh, man. Who's some Dolphins quarterback before two? A Ryan Tannehill. Didn't Chad Pennington. I don't think so. Dan Marino? Dan, no, Dan Marino. No, no, no. Um, Carson, I'm saying the Raiders quarterbacks now. Carson Palmer, no. A.J. McCarron, I don't think so. Skylar Thompson's only ever been with Miami. I feel like there's somebody like that. You know, some sort of kind of just career backup kind of guy. 
Raiders Dolphins. I feel, and again, these are two legacy programs. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No, I don't think so. No, Kenny Stabler went to the Saints. I was thinking about Kenny Stabler for the Raiders. No. How? Oh. Ricky Jay Ajayi? Did, he ever play Did Ricky Williams ever go to the Raiders? I don't know why. That smells like, I think, Ricky Williams. Now, again, I know he got drafted by the Saints. Now, Alex Leatherwood? That's a good pull. Did he ever play for the Dolphins? I don't know. He came to the Browns. Because remember when he got drafted, everybody goes, what the hell are they doing? A lot of Raiders picks that way. No. No, not on Alex Leatherwood. Son of a gun. Can we try flipping over to Green Bay? Yeah, we can try Green Bay Panthers on this one. Um... You know, I'm trying to run through guys that are there now. Like, Miles Sanders, no. And I'm feeling obviously not. Um, tight end-wise, I'm not smelling anything. This... Not Mason Crosby. I would like... To, like, J.K. Scott, was he there? Their punter? He's with the Chargers now. Joey Sly ever kick for the Packers? I don't think so. It's a good pull there. No. Damn. D'Angelo Williams? I don't think he ever went to Green Bay. Jonathan Stewart? No. Jake DeLome? You ever play for Green Bay? I don't think so. I don't think so. Matt, like, uh, uh, Matt Flynn? I know he went to the Seahawks after that, after his breakout with the Packers. Damn, he would have worked Raiders Green Bay, too. Matt Flynn. Man. Matt Flynn, yeah. Like, I'm thinking, like, did Jacoby Myers ever play for the Dolphins? I don't think so. It sounds good. It sounds right. But I don't think so. <sighs> One of the Pettises? Yeah, I'll go back to those guys. I mean, we could try to rip Josh Johnson here, but I don't think... If I had to rip him somewhere, I would go Miami Raiders. Rip Josh Johnson. Rip him. It's our, it's our Hail Mary. No. All right. Call it for the day. I really want to get a Panthers Raiders or Green Bay. Panthers Green Bay is I I can't. Give me someone that's like Randall Cobb. No, I don't think he ever Morgan Burnett. He came to the Browns from the from the Packers. I don't think there's any way. Whatever. Wait, uh yeah, just rip it, because I whatever. Morgan Burnett. I don't think that's gonna Yeah. Damn, man. Alright, go to those two. I wanna see. I know there's a defensive back. Right, Dolphins Raiders. Dolphins Raiders. Uh, Richie Incognito. Oh yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah, man, we could have got that. Dante Culpepper. See, I didn't. I know. wouldn't have gotten that. One for the Raiders and one for the Seahawks. Okay, Dolphins. yeah, so okay. People like that that we're talking about. Yeah. Kenyon Drake. I could have got that. I did not know that he was on the Raiders. Wow, Terry for Robisky. Dante, or I said that Brandon Bolden. Brandon Bolden. Um, we should have got Richie Incognito. We should have gotten that. It's kind of a piece of crap. That's about it. All right. And then go back over uh, Packers. Panthers. I know that there's somebody. There's a defensive player that I'm Reggie White. But, like, I didn't know he played a season for the Panthers. I didn't know. You know what I, I mean? Like, I did know that. I should have known. I knew there was a defensive player. I was going to say this, but I thought I was going to sound stupid for some reason. Julius Peppers. I, I knew. I didn't. Nah, that's our fault, too. Wow. Eric Metcalf. I got that. Um, no, I got that. Any other ones? No. No. I was going to say Julius Peppers, but I'm stupid. Ah, it happens. It happens. You know what else happens? Dane Brugler, seven round mock draft. Let's get to it. Do you want to do the top? Do you even care at the top anymore? Just see what Dane thinks. Taylor says she would follow me. 
or I don't know. Sorry, if it's a guy or a girl. Taylor's the unisex name. Okay. I would follow you, but I don't have Twitter. Hello, it's okay. That's okay. Did you get your thousand? Oh, Charles was screaming Julius Peppers. I'm sorry, Charles. Damn man, I'm sorry. We should have gotten that. I know. I was gonna say I didn't want to sound dumb. No, that's all right. That's all right. I feel like we're coming back around. We're getting a little bit better. I don't know. We'll see. Seven round mock Dane Brugler, Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, Drake May. Minnesota trades to four for J.J. McCarthy. Arizona trades to five. They take Marvin Harrison. Malik Neighbors go six. Joe Walt, seven. Whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, here's your interest for the Cleveland Browns. First off, I hate to tell you, Ryan, your guy, Lad McConkey, he goes 33 to the Panthers. Sorry, so, Matt. I just hit 1,000. Yeah, let's go. Thank you. Who was the follow? Uh, Browns fan at Die Hard Fan Thank only. Thank you. Hey, there we go. Thank you for watching. Thank you for following Ryan. He's at, how does the K look? It does it look so beautiful? Good. Doesn't it look good? So good? Doesn't it look good? It looks so good. I'm trending under 20. I was over 20 for a little while. I'm back under, so I got to oh, get back to beautiful. 20. K looks good on young Ryan Tyler 33. Congratulations. Big Thank day you. for us. Thank Ryan you. got it there. Uh, so the good news or the bad news is Lad McConkey is gone in Dane Brugler's mind. Here are the receivers gone. Adani Mitchell, um, Here's an interesting one, though. He does have Michael Penix going in the first round. So that, I think, helps the Browns. To who? Uh, he's got the, the, Raiders? the Raiders. Yeah, the Raiders trade up to go take Michael Penix in the first round. Here's your second round receivers off the board. Dean Brugler's mock. Lad McConkey off 33. Keon Coleman goes 37. Xavier Worthy goes 45. Ricky Pearsall goes 46. Troy Franklin goes 48. Rome Wilson goes 51. So you get to 54. Here are your receivers left on the board. Xavier Leggett. Uh, let me get down to round three, two. Wait, where'd Lad go? Lad went 33. Dan has Malachi Corley going in the third round. Wow. And the Browns don't take him with Jalen Polk. 54 overall. Cleveland Browns select Mason Smith. Defensive tackle, LSU. He writes, teams want a six foot five, 300 plus pound in the trenches. Those D line types are in short supply in this draft class, which will help push Smith up the board. With his age and his talent, the LSU product makes sense for Cleveland. And as it looks to add depth on the defensive line, no receiver for the Browns at 54. I don't know if I like that. I'm going to run through every pick. I love, I, I do love how Dane does this. He just gives you every single pick for a team in like a nice, concise way. Mason Smith, the tackle, LSU in the second round. 85 in the third round, Kieran Amajde, offensive tackle, Yale. Fifth round, Taj Washington, wide receiver, USC. Sixth round, J.D. Bertrand, linebacker, Notre Dame. Seventh round, Isaiah Davis, running back, South Dakota State. And Javon Cohen, guard, out of Miami. So you would have two offensive linemen, a wide receiver, running back, linebacker, defensive tackle as your draft. Home. I don't like them passing on Malachi Crowley, I don't either. obviously, but don't outside either. of that, I like the way they attacked each position. I love getting a linebacker. I'm all fine with getting a running back if it's later. It's later and again, it's the 227. And I do I would have I do I would like a tackle, whether it's defensive or offensive. I want an offensive more, especially as I'm not putting a D tackle on my 54. Yeah. I think that's too early. Um obviously that's all based on who's there, but I I'd, I'd give that a really good draft grade outside of Passing yeah. on Malachi Corley. Yeah, that's that would probably be my my biggest issue with it. And again, he's got Malachi Corley slipping to the third round. You, I would go back up. Like if I was the Browns and he's sitting there, I'm all for moving back up to try to go get him. I I'm I'm down in the D tackle position. I don't know. I think you have your guys. Now the thing is. You maybe not have a future, but like you drafted, you just drafted Siaki Ika. Why is he not playing? Why did he not play at all last year? I know there was a weight thing. They were trying to get his weight down. Maybe they just missed on that. Like, if you're already jettisoning off of that, and year after year, the Browns just keep finding these one-year veteran guys in the D-tackle. Just keep doing that. Why don't you just keep doing that? I'm out on the draft pick of the D-tackle. Yeah, I don't I, I mean, respectfully disagree with Dane Brugler, who I respect a lot. You got Dalvin, Tomlinson, Shelby He's, Harris, Maurice Hurst, Siaki Ika, uh, the one... What's his name? 
Jefferson or whatever from the Jets. Yeah, Quentin Jefferson. Quentin you got Jefferson. Yeah, like so, I mean, that's five there's right your there. guy. It's your point. I don't even. I mean, you would have to because he's a third round or second round pick. I think they're missing bad on that. Because the other thing, you talk about who you're going to knock off the 53, right? I say the same thing about wide receiver. If I'm sitting here banging the drum for Malachi Corley like I dude, that tells me that David Bell's not going to make this team. You're not going to carry that many receivers. Which is fine. That's what happens, man. I guess. But the same thing for the D-tackle position. I get it. And, and the only other thing that I maybe don't like about Dane's write-up is he said that this draft class for the D-tackles are void of these just massive hulking guys. So he pushes up. So is Mason Smith really just like a fourth-round guy? You're going to take him in the, third, in the second round? I'd actually rather have offensive line. Oh, 100%. In this, in this class, and it's the same thing. They're not going to play. But in this class, you're stacked on offensive tackles and wide receiver. You're going to push that on down. I saw some other things. I think Dane actually might have sent this out. This could be a record-breaking draft from a couple of posi- or a couple of reasons. Number one, it'd be the first time, I think, since... Oh, God, I can't remember what he said. I think maybe 08, something like that. You're going to have all seven picks be an offensive, line, or offensive player. And in fact, there's a good world that maybe the top 10. Dallas Turner's their first defensive player coming off the board at Alabama. There's a world, at the very least, I will stamp this. Your first seven picks are going to be offense. You're going to go Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, either one there. You mix in McCarthy. They're taking Marvin Harrison. Then they're going to take Malik Neighbors, and then Joe Alt's going to go. First seven picks are going to be all offense. And then I've also seen some numbers that in the 32 first picks, you might have a 21-11 skid or difference of defense versus offense. 21 potential offensive players in the first round to just 11 defensive ones. I mean, I'm. that makes you think, like, I mean, it's not really that surprising. I go back to college last year. I mean, who'd, who'd you, like, who would you even say was the best defensive player in college last year? You know what I mean? Like, we, there's That's no good, Aiden yeah. Hutchinson. Right, there's no right. Jadavion Clowney. Right. There's no Miles Garrett. Like, I, 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 that, I'm actually trying to think right now that I said that question. Like, who was the best defensive player in college last year? You know what I mean? Well, wasn't... Like, would it be Dallas Turner? Like, I don't know. There's no, there wasn't one really stood out, I feel like. Well, I feel like... Uh, I mean, in a, in a quarterback class that got lost in Caleb Williams. And sure, and I go back to, like, Jalen Carter the year before, which was pretty, you know, obvious. The isn't wasn't there a guy that they thought like hang on Peyton Wilson proper I'm looking at the awards the best defensive play, which these awards don't mean very much because there's guys that win this award and go in the seventh round or whatever NC State linebacker Peyton Wilson won the Benar uh, award for the best defensive player in football Xavier Watts the safety out of Notre Dame was the best defensive Bronco Nagurski winner on that. But you're right. I can't think of many good defensive players that were football. Um, That's what I'm saying. Here, hang on. College football rank, they did their top 100 players of last season. Jane Daniels, Michael Penix, Marvin Harrison, Bo Nix, Brock Bowers, Malik Neighbors, Rome, Dallas Turner was eight. Okay. So, so I guess yeah. maybe he is the best player. Um, Peyton Wilson, the linebacker. Oh, oh, that lay two guy out of UCLA because he's going to be a first round pick. That defensive like line, two, two, uh, yeah, lay two, lay a little atu, whatever his name is. Yeah. How about Cooper DeJean? It's a lot of name on him because he's a white guy playing white corner. Boy, yeah, you know. So I get that. Um, they had Tavondre Sweat on this list, but obviously that might not happen. You're right. You didn't have you didn't have a Jadavian Clowney in this draft. You didn't have somebody that you just knew was some game wrecker on defense, and that's probably why the, the skew is the way that it is. But again, with how the games are going, with how it's getting played, it's always going to skew offense. Let's go back to the face mask, man. I am just basking in this glory. Can you pull it up real quick? They have a bunch of pictures. Brown sent it out. Could you pull a picture up to show everybody, please? I'm sure Thank I can you. do that. Quickly. Thank you. Looks so good. They got Nick Chubb to take the pictures, man. The white face masks look so good, buddy. Where'd you get that? That's the one to show people because they also updated the... Even the logo looks better. Even the logo looks better with the face mask. I get that they tried some things. I understand that they wanted... It's simple. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't leave. You do not need to do anything. You're going to sell plenty of jerseys. The logo looks better. Everything looks better with this white face mask. There it is. Do you see it? There it is, Nick Chubb. Yes. Looks, doesn't it? It just makes the orange pop. It looks like he wants to run for 1,200 yards next year. He probably will. Even in 15 or in, you know, 13 games, games or whatever it's going to be. He's going to do or it. If he's on the pop, you got to miss the first four. First four. First four. If that actually happens. 
But look at it. Does not the orange, especially no, with agree. the it stripe, and they're going to go back to the gloss finish, not that matte crap. For some reason, the NFL got really into the When they got the, all their military stuff, they went with a lot of matte, and they didn't want the shine on it necessarily. They wanted all these matte colors. Go back to that, man. It's so much better. It looks so good. It's great. I love it. Good news from the Browns. They went back to it. And again, I hope they don't change it. I really hope they keep it that way for quite some time. All right. You want to catch a break? You want to talk about the Bills? Break, break them. The break. All right. After the break, we'll come back. We'll tell you what our boost is for tonight. We'll jump into timeout. We'll get you geared up for your Wednesday as well. Stay with us. Fontana Show right here on Big Play. Well, how do they know I'm doing this? Did somebody leak this out? It's social media. Oh. It's just, that's the way social media oh. works now. I thought maybe you were just running that yep, 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 yep. Welcome to Big Play, a sports media team that started back in 2014, and now we're not in a garage. Look at us, incorporating some of Cleveland's favorite sports personalities, bringing you fun and compelling content from downtown Cleveland. Coming to you live from the shores of Lake Erie in Burke Lakefront Airport, join Team Big Play for all the best sports talk in Ohio. Check us out on social media at Big Play, bringing you fun and compelling content from downtown Cleveland. Anthony Schlegel, just how physical he was. <laughs> you, know, you saw, saw the, the girth and the power and everything he was bringing to the table, especially when he was a nice, beefy 255 playing middle linebacker. We were called soft last year. You don't want to be soft, especially when you come to the playoffs. So that's going to be a process throughout this season of establishing us as a harder team you know, here in the How does an Ohioan build the perfect parlay? Who's got something? Big guys looking for long odds. The kids in Columbus are covering better than anyone. And at even odds. If it's even, I'm leaving. Listen, our championship DVD starts today. All right? Dude, I just got an invite to a Cincy playoff watch party. Shut up. Cincy, State, Cleveland, the perfect parlay. I'm a genius. For the best odds on Ohio sports, bet with your cojones. It is Spanish, dummy. Bet with typical sportsbook. I don't buy into this nonsense, this conspiracy nonsense that he's got his money and he's dogging it. He, that's ridiculous. Jumping a little bit of time up, I have a very interesting aviation milestone this day in history. Let's get to it. Welcome back. Fontana Show right here on Big Play. Of course, uh, we head back to do time up every day. We tell you what happened. Oh, is it the one where they pooped all over the plane? No. <laughs> what are you talking about? Remember that went viral? Some dude pooped everywhere. I, I, I don't think that would have made the cut for time hop. I don't know when that happened, but no, that's, that's, that, no, that's not the aviation thing I was talking right. about. No, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that coming up. 17th of April is the date. Do you know what day that happened? Mm, I can find out. Find out. Okay, find that out. Then the other video, that lady freaking out. Now she said her life is ruined because she got memed. Remember that? She was bitching yeah. on the plane. Now she's like Twitter famous. Yeah, but now she doesn't want to be Twitter, uh, Twitter famous anymore. She's sitting there freaking out on the plane. Just get on the plane, relax. Did you find it? The Delta flight was an hour long where passengers endured the stench of poop. In a bizarre and stomach-turning incident, it was from Alabama to Atlanta. It was on Christmas Eve, too. Mm. It was... The article was January 11th, so maybe it was like January 10th. Okay. 
Well, you write that down for your time hop, and I'll do time hop over here. I have another aviation story. It's not that. Let's head on back. Including one year ago today, Jalen Hurts and the Eagles agreed to a five-year, $255 million deal. Now, I sent a tweet out what impact that could have on Lamar Jackson's deal, because let's not forget he hadn't signed his deal yet. You think they'll regret that deal with Jalen Hurts? Mm. These were $255 million? I think for the quarterback market today, yeah. Again, not fully guaranteed, but still a lot of money. Uh, this day, 2020, Kareem Hunt signed his restricted free agent tender with the Browns to return. I mean, everybody made a big deal. I know what he did, and I have given him a second chance because he asked for a second chance because he atoned to what he did. He admitted he made a mistake. It was a horrible mistake. It was disgusting what he did, and he saw the error of his ways. That being said, when he came to the Browns, I don't know if they ever really got fully out of him what they expected with Chubb and Hunt and the two running back system. I also maintain, I don't know if a two running back system works in the NFL in today's day and age, but rejoin the Browns this day, 2020. I have a host of NBA playoff games for the Cavs. Are you ready? This day, 2017, game two, Cavs beat the Pacers 117 to 101. Kyrie led the way with 37 points. This day, 2016, game one of the playoffs, Cavs beat the Pistons 106 to 101. Kyrie Irving had 31. LeBron shipped in 28. How they beat, how anybody beat those two, which I know they didn't a lot in the playoffs, but they were a dynamic deal to be said. Also, this day, uh, 2010 to the prior time with LeBron here. Cavs beat Chicago 95-83. to 83. Uh, Going back a little bit this day, 2012, the Indians signed Johnny Damon to a minor league contract. That's a good one to remember for the Immaculate Grid. Not yeah, that we do everywhere. baseball, but he played a lot of places, man. I mean, Cleveland, Detroit, Oakland. Kansas City, New was York. He in, was he in L.A. at one point? I think so, yeah. He was all over the place, man. Johnny Damon. Let me see. Just out of curiosity. Boss, that's right, dude. Royals, Athletics, Boston, Yankees, Detroit, Tampa Bay, Cleveland. So he played, I said, yeah, he Kansas. plays three teams in the AL Central. Oh. Yeah, the only ones that he didn't play for were Chicago and Minnesota. And Minnesota, Minnesota, two-time All-Star, two-time World Series, and he, and he, a uh, two-time World Series champion. Did you know he led the league in stolen bases in two thousand? Johnny Damon for you. Nice. Johnny Damon, there it is. Uh, we go back this day, 1999, the NFL Draft. Browns select Tim Couch, first overall. Other drafts for the Browns, Kevin Johnson, the wide receiver, Raheem Abdullah, Dalen McCutcheon, who I love, cornerback. I think Colorado for Dalen McCutcheon, if I'm shooting around that. Darren Cheverine. No, actually, no, no, no. He went to Colorado. Dalen McCutcheon... Went to, oh, USC. Southern California there for Dalen McCutcheon. Darren Cheverini and then Wally Rayner. All your draft picks for the Browns this day, 1999. I think Couch would have been something if he hadn't gotten hurt, broken leg, all that other kind of stuff. He didn't have an offensive line. I think the Browns made the right pick. You want to go back to the 1999 draft, see what we got there? Sure. So Tim Couch goes number one because the very famous debate was three quarterbacks Went one, two, three. You want to guess who the other two were? In 99. 99. Because the debate was on. Most people were okay with the Browns selecting Tim Couch. Eagles selected Donovan, Donovan McNabb. McNabb. Went two. What team drafted three? Cincinnati. Cincy. I'd be really impressed if you got this. Cincinnati, third overall pick, quarterback, 1999. Or Keely Smith. Yeah, never would have got that. Hall of Famer goes four. Edger and James to the Colts. Ricky Williams goes five. Tory, because that was the draft that New Orleans gave everything up to go up and get him. Tory Holt goes six. Champ Bailey, Hall of Famer, goes seven. David Boston, eight. Dante Culpepper goes 11. Javon Curse, Damian Woody, 16, 17. Antoine Winfield Sr., 23. Hall of Famers out of this draft. Champ Bailey and Edger and James. At this point, are Corey the Holt's only ones. Tory Holman's going to go eventually. Eventually. But again, I mentioned all the Browns picks there this day, 1999. Uh, this day, 1970, Apollo 13 returned to Earth. 
That was the one that Ryan's are not. They didn't land on the moon. That was the one they had the ex- explosion on the oxygen tank and they had to come back. Uh, this day, 1964, the Ford Mustang debuted at the World's Fair. My dream car is a Mustang, not a 64 Mustang, but a 2012 Shelby GT500 Super Snake. Tesla Cybertruck? That what you want? Is this your dream car? No. Oh. What is your dream car? Do you have a dream car? No. No? Don't have one? I'm not a big car guy. I'm not a big car guy either, but Shelby GT500 Super Snake. Red, black. I saw one online. It was like $80,000, and I joked to my wife. She's like, that's... Because, like, her and I go back and forth, so I we got a newer car uh, after my car got sold. Uh, so I got an Explorer because it's the it's the family, you know, the family truckster, and I needed the third row seating. I, I wanted a truck. I, I But my brothers, I have four brothers. They all have trucks. I'm the only one that doesn't have a truck. So my wife all the time is like, well, if you really need a truck, you have plenty of options. I'm like, yeah, but there's little things. I need to go pick up mulch. I want to just put it in the bed of my truck. She goes, you'd use it twice a year. So her and I went back and forth on a truck. She uttered the words, I'd rather you just go buy that Mustang than buy a truck. I was like, all right, then. Not that we have the money or looking for a house and all that kind of stuff, but the Ford Mustang debuted this thing. We got a little Browns news. Nothing crazy. Okay, go ahead. um, They announced who's going to be announcing the Browns' second pick of the day. Oh, yeah, they do that. They have the, uh, uh, is it a, uh, I'm assuming it's a player, former player. Yeah. Go ahead. Carl Nassib. Oh, good the for NFL's Carl. The NFL's first openly gay player. Good for Carl. And I, I, he's retired, I believe, now, right? And Peggy Roski of the Trevor Project. Sorry, okay. if, sorry if I pronounced that good. right. Good. Good for Carl, man. With all, <laughs> tell me you don't think about his financial advice from hard knocks. Or you just yeah. take this money, and then you got this, and everybody's like, find me that, Carl. I would give Carl Nassim $40,000 if I could get the return that he was talking about. Uh, good for Carl. That's awesome. Good for him for uh, pronouncing on that. Uh, all right, we continue on. Uh, this day, 1964, here is the aviation one that I was talking about. Jerry Mock of Bexley, Ohio, this day, 1964, became the first woman to fly solo around the world. Her plane was the Spirit of Columbus. It was a 23,000-mile journey that started on March 19th Over 29 days and 21 stops, she landed back in Columbus this day, 1964, to complete the first woman solo trip around the world. It'd be cool to say you've been around the world. I know, but it's like, imagine 1964 in that plane. You know how boring that must have been? All day, just sitting there. I mean, maybe a radio. I don't know. That takes a lot of perseverance. So congratulations, sir, this day, 1964. Uh, this day, 1960, you know the curse of Rocky Calavita? Sounds familiar. They traded him to the Tigers this day. Now, this is not the trade that that triggered the curse of Rocky Calavito. They actually got him back and then traded him away again. Uh, but it happened this day, 1960. Uh, one of the best to ever. Well, really, I'll tell you two here that the best to ever do it made their debut. They stay 1955, Roberto Clemente, and this day 1951, Mickey Mantle. Each made their MLB debuts four years apart. Uh, Fenway Park opened this day 1934. Been to it, paid $40 on an off day to take a tour. They make more money on an off day than the Guardians do on a Tuesday night. It's kind of sad when you think about it from that standpoint. A uh, very happy birthday goes out to Dwayne Casey, Boomer Esiason, Marquise Grissom, Tony Baselli. Jennifer Gardner, Victoria Beckham, Rowdy Roddy Piper, Redman, and I was just listening to some Tool this morning, Maynard, uh, Maynard Keenan of Tool in a Perfect Circle, all celebrating birthdays today. All right, I got one television show for you that you got to guess on today. This day, 2011, a very famous show that people got upset on how it ended. 2011, they got upset how it ended. Oh, Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is correct. Don't spoil it, please. I've not watched a second. I've only watched the first. I probably actually... I probably actually won't ever watch it. It's so good. Because I've heard how bad the ending is. Yeah, but who cares? But why do I want to watch something that I know the ending is going to disappoint? Because it's such a good show. It's the one, like it's the only show. Yeah. Where, it's one of the only shows ever. Know. It's one of the only show, shows ever that I've genuinely felt 
enraged by a character. Like, I wanted to physically hurt them. And for everybody who knows Game of Thrones, yeah. they know that it's Joffrey Baratheon. That's what I don't... Joffrey. Like, okay. Tell me if my premise is off. It's the medieval times, and it's a fight between houses, right? Well... The San... It, it, the Cersei Lannister... What's the other family? So, so basically, it, the whole whole thing is called Westeros. Okay, it's like the world is called Westeros, and yes, and they got dragons. And in essence, well, in Game of Thrones, all the dragons were extinct, so they thought until um, spoiler alert until um, Daenerys Targaryen, Targaryen came along. Yeah, she yeah. got it. She got a dragon egg, and then she started to hatch them because she's a dragon queen, okay. and she's making her way back to Westeros to try and take what she thinks is her rightful place on the throne in King's Landing. And it's just a bunch of, yeah, houses beefing to have power. It's so good, though. Is there not an uh, incestual relationship there? No, there is. Like, yeah. Yeah, like, for um, Queen Cersei, she has sex with her brother. I'm which, out. Which you've come to I'm find out, sorry, not spoiler, is... King, not her brother. Is... Jo is then their son is King Joffrey, who they don't know was a product of incest. They thought it was the former King Baratheon's son. So they, next now you're now you're just pulling out. I'll tell you everything that you said there. I'm out. I'm no. out. I'm out. No. There's a lot of shows that I say I've never seen that people are crazy, like Sopranos. I know how Sopranos ends, so I don't know if I actually want to watch it. Yeah, I don't. So I think it's the same thing when it comes to Game of Thrones. But you don't know how Game of Thrones is going to end. I just know everybody hated it. Doesn't mean you're gonna. Because doesn't it. doesn't doesn't who's Kit Harrington's character? Jon Snow. He's like the most badass dude. But doesn't he take it down? I don't know. Oh, you haven't seen? You haven't finished it? No. Oh. I mean, what I'm do you sure mean you haven't finished it? Well, I have a theory. I'm pretty sure he's a Targaryen, but I can't confirm that. I I, I... great. You had plenty of time. Why haven't you finished it yet? I just haven't gotten around to it. Yeah. All right. All right. I guess. I guess. So here we are. Um. The Browns asked Adam Schefter if they like the new helmets, and he said it's hard not to. They go, hi, Shefty, do you like them? And he goes, hard not to. You know, Browns. It's, you know, it's also hard not to like. Our boost. Yeah, let's go, guards. Come on now. We had to stay away from Ben Lively tonight. He's not started. I don't know what to do. Where to go with the bats are staying hot. The under one run in the first inning, I don't like it because we need more runs, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. And then we round it out. Who do we pick to get a couple hits? Uh, we just need one hit from Gabriel Arias, who's been an absolute tear lately. What are we boosted to, buddy? Plus 603. Woo, another six here. We got to hit one, man. We got to hit one. Tipico, download the app. Use the code FONTANA100 when you sign up. Deposit and bet $25 as a new customer. After your game is done, you get $100 of bonus bets. Where are we at here? Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Boosts, baby. Dude, I th these boosts, there's so many. I love it. I love it. It's so great. They have an imperfect. Oh, buddy, I better jump on this one. They have an imperfect parlay under first inning runs in the Cardinals, Athletics, Yankees, Blue Jays, Cubs, Diamondbacks, Reds, Mariners. You just need three of those four for plus 189. I, I think I'm going to put $10 on that. I think I'm going to put $10 on that. Just did. Boom. Done. What an imperfect parlay that is. That's going to hit. I know that. Um, I should have just gone to the game. It's probably easier to just go to the game. That's how many boosts, folks, are on this. Seriously, that's how many boosts you can get here with Tipico. We are the last game of the day at 710. Everybody else today is earlier. Boosts. Oh. What? Cash back, baby! There yeah! Is that bar filled up? Hell yeah, it is! $5 cash back par or 5%. Boom. Here we go. I got my cash back on that too. Let's go, man. Here we go. Here we go. I'm in. Love it. Use that code Fontana100 when you sign up. Again, every bet you're placing, you're getting the cash back. I've told you about our NBA playoffs right now. You bet any same game parlay in an NBA playoff game. You get a bonus for every three. God, do you want to cook one up for tonight? I do. I see we have a big play cap or Cavs boost for Saturday. I know, but I want to do one for the Hawks Bulls tonight. Okay. I like the Bulls minus two and a half. DeMar DeRozan, 29 and a half. That's a lot. That's a, a, just points? Yeah. Vukovic, 20 and a half. Kind of like that. Here. Okay. Hang on. Trey Young's going to score 20 tonight, right? Give me that. 
Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Give me, give me, give me, give me. Uh, give me some rebounds here. Six rebounds for... It's tough, man. DeAndre Hunter, six. What about assists? Can I get four assists from Kobe White? All right, all right. Little three leg for me here. Uh, give me one more. Give me one more. Give me one more. Um, Assist three pointers made. Trey Young. To Alex hit. Crusoe to get a steal. Oh, steal. Um, where do I got that? Assists, rebounds, 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 rebounds. I don't know if I see steals on here. Hang on. Same game parlay. Steals. I, 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 I got to get three for Caruso. That's a lot, man. Three steals? Yeah, that's a lot. I like the under. Can I take the under on that? Sure. All right, under. Four legs, 440. I'm going to put five bucks on that to win 27. And for every three that they hit, I'm in with Tipico. There you go. That We're making money here. Making money. Love it. Tipico, use that code Fontana100 when you get signed up. All right, we've had some controversy with the bracket. Oh, God. Of course right, you okay, did. You go ahead. Winners, first rounds, Mc, Big Mac, and the French fries. I had people. I had people really telling me about the milkshakes. Can I get you one other? Moose tweets me this morning. Guys, the French fries are the easiest choice for, as far as taste, but it's the coffee that sets McDonald's apart. They're the strongest coffee in the market. If I had to do without one, I'd have to do without the fries. I can get good fries elsewhere, but that strong ass coffee is one of a kind. That's a tweet from Moose. This I morning. will say, I had two. I love their. Coffee. I had two cups of coffee from McDonald's on yesterday's show. Get you going, I was, doesn't it? I was tweaked out. Get you going. I love their coffee. The only issue, I got to get their coffee. I don't need all the frappe stuff. I, you know, I don't like having a coffee that I drink that's 400 calories because it's all fruit. I, and I need fruit fruit in there. I need some flavor in there. But I'll just get a regular coffee, two creams, and a sugar. That's it. That's all I need. Nope. Just drink a black. I'm not man enough. Ryan, I'm not mad enough to like this coffee. This is my FTN coffee. I'm battling this throat thing. So my coffee, we just get the almond creamer with the vanilla. I just pour that in. It takes care of all of it for you. So tonight, what do we got going for us tonight? Group three and four. All right, group three McNuggets. So what is this MDP? Mike, what is Michael, Michael Dean Perry? What is that? The Michael Dean Perry. So the Michael Dean Perry, you know who Michael Dean Perry was? No. Or is no. he um he played for the Browns back in the 80s. He is, you know, the refrigerator, William Perry. I think it's you know the refrigerator, the running back for the Bears. He was a D tackle. They put in the backfield and hand the ball off to him. Okay, that's his brother. That's his brother. Uh, Michael Dean Perry was drafted by the Browns second round in the '88. He played in the Pro Bowl six times. He's a really good player for the Browns, and he also had a McDonald's sandwich named after him. It was only in the Cleveland area, but it was a. Uh, tell me, this isn't great. It was a double cheeseburger. They added an extra patty and bacon. Mm. So a triple cheeseburger with the bacon was the Michael Dean Perry. Sounds like heart disease. What isn't at McDonald's, though? That's what the Michael Dean Perry was. He had commercials. It's $1.99. The MDP. Triple cheeseburger with bacon. It's $1.99. All right, what's going to have some work to do is it's going against McNuggets, Snack Wraps, and McFlurry. People are all about Snack Wraps because yeah. they're gone, and I think there's a little bit about uh, nostalgia, I guess, because they're gone. So what's your vote for group three? I love the McNuggets, so I'll probably go with them. I'll go with McNuggets. Okay. And then Fount group four, Fountain Pop. You don't stop it there. I mean, you can do the rest of them, but they will all lose to the Fountain Pop. Egg McMuffin, McRib, Quarter Oh, I forgot about the Egg McMuffin. I would vote Egg McMuffin. Dude, there's nothing, especially if you've had one too many the night before. Yeah, yeah. And you go in there and you go, I need a Fountain. Me, personally, Sprite. But you get a fountain high C roll in there. Because remember when they made the idiot idea to take away the high C? That would That's be like Taco Bell getting rid of Baja Blast. Which, by the way, you know Baja Blast is now going to be like sold in stores, like commercially. Like you can just go into a grocery store and get it. What a miss from Taco Bell. They had that market curbed, man. They were the only ones that had it. Gotta go for good Baja Blast. So are you voting Fountain Pop or Egg McMuffin? Fountain Pop. Fountain Pop. I've tried to make Egg McMuffins at the house. I never get the bread toasted the right way. Yeah, you It's never it. toasted the right way. And the, and the ham is good. Plus, my wife did get me the egg uh, circle things to try to make them. 
Here's, I think, the difference. Do they not steam their eggs? I think they steam their eggs or something there. Never worked. Yeah, you never watched the behind the scenes of McDonald's videos? Probably don't. Oh, watch they, it. they probably they, never eat it again. What do you mean? No, 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 no. It's just them making it. It's like people that work at McDonald's, they put a GoPro on, and it's how they make the bur- the burgers, how they make the... Uh, I find it very interesting. Call me weird. It's super interesting. So when they make the uh, egg, the eggs for the Egg McMuffin, they've got a six-tray like circle thing, and they crack an egg in one. Then their grills, it's not even just on a grill. They have an automatic thing that comes down. Excuse me. And it's an automatic timer. So it cooks from both sides. It's how they cook the burgers, but it's also how they cook the um, the eggs. And I never get them right at home. They never come out right at home. Probably because I don't have the heating source on top either. Because the, the thing about an egg McMuffin, you can't get those eggs that way anywhere else. Like the way that they're made there, plus the cheese. Why don't they serve breakfast? I mean, I know why. I wish they served breakfast all day. It'd be delicious. I'm still going fountain pop, though, probably over the egg McMuffin. Okay. But then your comeback is, dude, you can get a fountain pop at a gas station, right? You can yeah. stop in anywhere and get it done. That's tough. I'll have to think about it, but vote at Matt Fontana Show. Drops a follow there. Ryan, the new thousander over there. He's got a thousand follows there at Ryan Tyler 33 so happy to see that. And we're making some good headway on our own show right there. At Matt Fontana Show, we're creeping up the follow uh, game right there. Tonight, don't forget, come get some. No, no, I always do that with Bruce. It's bonus time with Bruce Drennan tonight. So check that out. The return last night, Josh and Maria Cribs. I saw all the videos from the Donkey Derby, by the way. Did you yeah. see Padone kind of eat some yeah, crap out he, there? Yeah, he fell man. off the donkey. You got you got abused. Yeah, so that's up. Uh, they had der- uh, uh, Donkey Derby Day out there with the captains. Reflog was there. Padone was there. Folks, it's everywhere. Big play. Check it out there tonight. Bonus time with Drennan. Appreciate all your supporters always with us. We're back tomorrow, Thursday edition, 9 to 11. We'll talk to you then. Get it tonight. Cards, let's go. And playing, I'll take the Heat plus five, but I really like the Bulls minus three. Get that same game parlay in with Tipico. Get those bonuses with a three-point made. For Ryan Tyler, I'm Matt Fontana as always. Take it easy.